Palestine. Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, I might have said a good cold morning. It's really cold this uh, morning, right? Uh, thank you for ca crawling out of your bed, joining us again. We are ready to have our third session of um, Redeeming Technology Workshops. Um, this is the third time we're meeting, so I just want to know how many of you are here in this session series for the first time. Okay, right. Thank you for coming. How many of you have been here twice? Okay, good. How many of you have been here all the way? Like this is the third time. Oh, good. Right, Alistair, right. <laughs> Atlas, good. Very loyal supporters. Um, it's exciting to be meeting again, right? Uh, the last time we met was two months ago. Uh, still remember what we did, what we discussed two months ago? Do you still remember the speakers? Okay, of course, Mark, you will remember. <laughs> Let me ask uh, Agnes. Okay. The two speakers last time you remember? Oh. The face. The face, okay. <laughs> Via the Skype session, right? <laughs> Professor John Wyatt, right? Um, he talked about human nature and technology, right? He talked about certain Christ, uh, Christian ethics issues as well, involved in some medical intervention technology. Right? We were very happy to have him via Skype, right? Do you remember the other speaker? Yeah, right. Uh, Lauren, Professor Fisher, he talked about uh, technology not just being tools or technique. Technology is actually technological systems, right? Institutions that may pervade the whole society. So that was the second session. And before that, of course, um, President of Lumia College, Dr. Leung, did a quick recap of a Christian framework, deep structure thinking about technology as well. So this is the third session, and uh, we are very pleased to have uh, two speakers uh, with us today. Uh, I will first introduce our first speaker, uh, Professor Keith Chen here. Let's first give him a round of applause before I think. <laughs> Professor Keith Chen. Uh, Professor Chan is trained in computer science and statistics. He's got a PhD degree in systems design engineering from the University of Waterloo in Canada. Uh, he worked at IBM Canada Laboratory in Toronto before he joined Ryerson University as associate professor. And then he came to Hong Kong Polytechnic University, where he now is professor in the Department of Computing. Uh, from 2002 to 2008, he was the head of the department. From 2011 to 2016, he was the dean of students. His research interests are varied, okay, including artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data analytics, bioinformatics, fuzzy systems, nature-inspired computing, and software engineering. I must admit, most of these terms, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, uh, maybe Professor Chen can enlighten us on these a little bit later. He has 250 research publications supported by Research Grants Council, the Innovation and Technology Commission of the uh, Hong Kong SAR government and the industry. So we are very pleased to have him as the speaker uh, for us today. His topic is the business of artificial intelligence. Without further ado, I'll just hand it over to Professor Chen. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you for inviting me uh, to come to give this talk. Uh, now, uh, I'm supposed to um, talk about AI. Uh, you, you've been told that I have so many research areas, uh, but they are all under AI. Well, let me tell you more about uh, what I've been doing for the last 30 years. Um, Now, I gave you two articles to read ahead of time, okay? <laughs> the first one is uh, taken from um, Harvard Business Re Review. Uh, I think whatever that appears in Harvard Business Review is something that uh, we all have to know, okay? Uh, because it becomes so popular that uh, it appears in a secular magazine, uh, and this is about AI. It talks about the AI technology. Now, the other one which is uh, very interesting is uh, because it appears in, that, in, in the Atlantic which is also a very popular magazine. It's about uh, how AI can be a threat to Christianity. Uh, I think uh, that should be uh, something that uh, we all <laughs> have to be concerned, okay? Uh, so I, I've chosen these articles uh, and uh, because they are more well written. Okay? There are so many things about AI. Uh, there are more and more articles about uh, what Christians should uh, understand about AI. Uh, but I've chosen them because they are better written, okay? Uh, even though um, I don't see why this is uh, something that should be of concern, okay? 
Now I gave uh, a, I gave a talk uh, just this morning. I mean this Monday uh, at the Institute of Bankers. Uh, I spoke to the bankers. I told them to, uh, about AI. I also spoke about uh, potential applications of AI in virtual banking. Uh, I have to admit that. Uh, I mean when I speak, I, I <laughs> when I when I talk. Okay, I, I talked as if uh, I, w I was an expert uh, in this area because I, uh, many of my instructor areas is actually related to banking and finance, uh, how AI could be uh, applied. Uh, but when it comes to this talk, uh, I have to admit that uh, I feel really inadequate because I, I just don't have the training. Okay? <laughs> I don't have uh, training in theology, in philosophy, in whatever uh, that can allow me to speak like an expert, okay? I, I know AI technology, okay? Uh, I know the applications. Uh, but when it comes to question implications, I can tell you what motiv what, uh, motivate have, what have been motivating me uh, to work in this area. Uh, because I, I really believe that uh, the more I work in this area, the more I see uh, how wonderful creation is, okay? Uh, I've uh, taken some Bible verses uh, when I, uh, I, I mean, I, I thought of some Bible verses, uh, like uh, one of the worst the Bible verses that came to my mind was um, how human were fearfully and wonderfully made, okay? Uh, I'll tell you more, okay, why? Uh, what, uh, why I was motivated to work in this area, okay, uh, and why I feel so excited. Uh, but before I do that, let me just uh, begin with some terms, okay? Uh, AI, actually is AI, okay? AI is not new. Okay? Uh, the, the term was first introduced in 1956. Uh, it is uh, supposed to mean that, uh, I mean, it is defined to be uh, something that's concerned with making computers do things that otherwise would require human intelligence. Uh, now, of course, when it comes to human intelligence, we, we, one thing that is very important is that human uh, beings are uh, able to learn, okay, so machine learning is one of the very important things. Uh, now you see AI being mentioned, you see machine learning being mentioned, I want you to know that machine learning is part of AI. Okay, so when I, when I tell people that I work in AI machine learning, okay, uh, these are meant to be for people who do not know so much about AI. I mean, by telling people that I work in AI, they should uh, expect me to know something about machine learning. Okay? So machine learning is under AI. What else, okay? Uh, natural language processing, we need to be able to understand language. We need to be able to make the computer to see and to understand speech. Uh, we also need to, I mean, computers that are supposed to behave like human has to be able to process knowledge, okay? Uh, they have to solve problems, they have to manage uncertainty, okay? So all these topics are under AI. And uh, all these things about fuzzy logic that uh, you've been told, uh, things about, um, nature inspired computing they are related to problem solving okay so everything is under AI so I've been working in AI for a long time uh, machine learning let me uh, machine learning is sort of behind all of these things okay we need machine learning to we need learning to understand natural language we need learning to be able to see and understand speech uh, so uh, most important topic under AI is machine learning uh, machine learning uh, is concerned with making computer learn okay uh, but one thing special about making computer learn is that uh, we are not supposed to explicitly, explicitly program the computer to learn, okay? I mean, we, we can, uh, you know, to program the computer, the learning procedures, but we cannot, I mean, uh, we, we do not know, okay, what uh, the computer will end up learning okay, after they learn about the process to learn, okay? Now, this is uh, what uh, makes AI so dangerous. I'll have more to tell you later. You can, you do not know what the, the computer end up learning. And that can be disastrous, okay? <laughs> According to some of the people, okay? So as I said, all the other things uh, are supposed to be related to machine learning. Now, I, I want you to know that I graduated uh, with a degree in computer science statistics. Now, I, the reason why I bring up statistics is that I've always liked data. Now, um, AI, machine learning is related a lot to data. You need to discover things in data, okay? Uh, you need to learn from data, okay? So uh, all these things about big data analytics or whatever, <laughs> uh, data science, they are all related to AI in some way. So I'll have more to tell you if I have time. Uh, 
Now, uh, the reason why I tell you why uh, that I graduated in 1984 is significant, okay? I finished in computer science statistics and I went on to do my master's and PhD in machine learning and AI. So I've been working in AI for, for more than 30 years. Uh, but for some time, I, kept, I, I did not want to tell people that I work in AI. Uh, because people think that, oh, you, you still work in AI, so old fashioned, okay? Can you really get some grant, grants? Can you really get some research funding by working in AI? Now, I, I want to tell you why, okay? Uh, because there are, there are three, I mean, there, there, are, <laughs> there are periods of boom and, boom and bust in AI. Uh, I want you to know that uh, 1984, when I finished my bachelor's degree, AI was popular, mainly because uh, the Japanese uh, government decided to invest a lot of money okay, to make massively parallel computing. They want uh, computers to be able to stimulate human thinking. Human, they want computers to be able to stimulate the brain. Uh, uh, by the way, okay, Professor Choi here is really an expert as well, too. Okay? So uh, he could supplement some of the things I say. Okay? Uh, now, fifth generation computer, and, and, and because the, the Japanese decide to invest a lot of money, the US government thinks that they cannot uh, you know, just be left behind, so they decide to invest a lot of money. And at that time, uh, AI was very, very popular, okay? but uh, until the, the year 1992, Japanese government decided that uh, they wanted to give up on AI because <laughs> After 10 years of research, right, they, they found that the computer that they built are slower than the sun workstations, okay? Uh, so uh, by massively paired the computer, trying to simulate human uh, thinking, they uh, end up uh, failing to do that. Uh, they are slower even than a single CPU. <laughs> and of course, uh, part of the reason why was that uh, at that time communication was slow, okay? And one of the reasons, I mean, of course, after that, as I said, okay, I didn't want to tell people that I work in AI anymore uh, because no one works in AI. Uh, but the reason why to, I, I still consider me as work, working in AI is that uh, machine learning became under another name okay, that was called data mining. So for many years, I've been telling people that I work in data mining, but actually they are, they are actually machine learning. Okay? And then after data mining, it becomes uh, data, big data, big data, people call it big data. Okay? And then uh, two years ago, okay, people suddenly become uh, you know, very excited about machine learning again. Okay? Now, mainly because of, uh, I don't know how much of uh, AlphaGo you know, okay? uh, because of this uh, Go chess playing uh, program that's called AlphaGo. Okay? Uh, they managed to be able to win uh, a game over the, some of the best uh, Go players in the world. Okay? Now, uh, now let me pause here, okay? I think I need to tell you why uh, we have to know about AI. I think everybody has to know, okay? Uh, mainly because of this, okay? Uh, many years ago, okay? I think it was in the year 1907, okay, that uh, computer won a game against the world uh, chess champion at that time. And then uh, for several years, uh, from 1997 to 2005, uh, sometimes the computer won some games. Sometimes human beings won some games. But since 2005, no one had ever beaten computer again. Okay, so computer became so good at chess playing that uh, no one should think of uh, you know, beating the computer anymore. But only at uh, chess, okay, but not Go. Okay? Uh, the reason being that uh, if you are to play trackers, okay, uh, you need to know, according to some books, you need to know 25 moves ahead of ahead of you okay, to, in order to be able to, to win. Now think about what you, what you do with uh, playing chess, okay? You think about what you, need, what you want to do next, and you think about what the opponents would try to move. Okay, if you are able to move, uh, you know, think uh, 25 steps ahead of time, then you'll win, okay? Like, uh, for example, people think that uh, if you are able to think 10 to 15 moves ahead of time, then you can play like the grandmasters, okay? But then you think about this uh, being something very, very difficult, okay? Uh, I move this piece, and you probably ha have these several pieces that you can move. If you, you are to move this one, I'll move this one, okay? Now, when it goes down the, the tree, okay, the, the, the third tree, okay, it becomes very large. It becomes too huge for human to handle. I think for most of us, two or three steps ahead is something that you can manage, okay? Uh, if you can manage more, then you become an expert.
Okay. Uh, now, uh, but uh, gold chest, people think that uh, is impossible because uh, there are so many possible moves. Okay. I mean, for those of you who know gold, okay, uh, there are 19 by 19. It's a 19 by 19 grip. Uh, 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 it's a big grip. Uh, uh, and um, I don't think it's easy, okay? Uh, people calculate this to be 10 to the power, uh, the number of possible moves, okay? 10 to the power 761. I, I don't know how they come up with this number. But the total number of atoms in the world is only 10 to the power, power 18, okay? So there are more moves than the total number of atoms. So think about this, so how can you, how can compute a bit human being uh, in goal? Okay, so they, they never think that this is possible until uh, deep mind, okay, uh, come of this uh, chess playing game and uh, manage to win everybody, okay. Uh, right now, no one has been able to beat computer anymore, okay, uh, when it comes to even to go. Uh, at least we're not uh, by searching through a, a big search tree because they use uh, something different, okay. Now, I'll have more to tell you later on, okay. Uh, this is uh, said by Larry Page, uh, founder of Google. Uh, according to him, AI would be the ultimate version of Google, okay? the ultimate search engine that would understand everything on the web. So they will, they will link up all the concepts. So now that reminded uh, me of a project that I did about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, there are altogether 10 million pages if you are to browse uh, Wikipedia. So if we are to consider one page as one concept. What I did was uh, that I linked up all the 10 million pages, okay? because all these concepts may be related. So I built something like a graph like that, okay? And, and I can understand, okay? <laughs> I mean, of course, I, I cannot okay, uh, read all the pages, okay, but the computer can. So they can, they know which concept are related, okay? Now, this is something that uh, Google has been doing as well, too, okay? It will understand exactly what you want. Uh, even, if, even if you don't know what keyword, okay, that you're supposed to search, because they know what concepts are related. And it would give you the right thing, okay? Uh, we are nowhere near now, near that now, okay? But according to Larry Page, sooner or later, okay? Uh, we'll be able to achieve that, okay? Uh, we get incrementally closer to that. Now that's, uh, at that time, that no one can really beat AI. Uh, because uh, right now, even now, okay? We cannot beat AI. Microsoft and Alibaba has an AI program that he'll beat human in, in the Stanford Reading Comprehension Test for the first time. Now, that was uh, January the 15th, 2018, latest news. Now, think about how they could actually beat human beings because they can build up, they read everything on the internet, okay? And they, beat, they, they build their own concept map. Chinese robot becomes the world fir world's first machine to pass medical exam. Now, they, they, don't, they don't just barely pass, okay? They got uh, better than the median <laughs> marks, okay? So uh, we can have a computer that can self-learn and become a doctor. Uh, at least we become at least become an average doctor, okay? <laughs> Even though they may not become the best doctor, okay? Uh, I'll have more to tell you later on, okay? Now, what else can AI do? Now, this is uh, taken from uh, I think I don't remember the name, but this is Beijing. They have all these cameras uh, mounted on the street, and they know exactly who. You I mean, they know exactly what you are doing. Right? Someone riding a bicycle, they make them, uh, the, the, um, model, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the model of the car, uh, what is the uh, person is standing here. I mean, everybody uh, gets uh, sort of uh, tracked, okay, if you're on the street. <laughs> and they are very accurate, okay? Now, nowadays, the facial recognition program, they can be 99.9% .9 accurate, okay? So don't expect yourself to be able to escape a camera, okay? If you don't hide your face. Uh, somehow you need to hide something, eh? wear a mask. Uh, but still, you may get recognized because you still expose your eyes. You want to make sure just cover your eyes, cover your mouth and nose, okay? Then there's a big better chance eh, that you, you will not get caught, okay? Uh, these are, uh, they are they're very accurate. They can be very accurate. If something falling down eh, on the street, okay? These, these are things that actually are captured and are recognized. Uh, of course, uh, they, they are supposed to, you know, prevent crime. <laughs> uh, but then, of course, they can be used for other things as well, too. Um, now, speech recognition code uh, is just as good as prose transcribe. But I think this is not, uh, this is, speech recognition is already very 
accurate, okay? Uh, now, this is test to speech. Now, uh, many years ago, when you uh, watch a movie, okay, when the robot speak, you can, you can easily tell that this is a speech by the robot. But now, okay, speech synthesis program has gotten so, so well that you cannot really de differentiate, okay? They will just read from the newspaper. You thought someone's reading uh, the newspaper to you, okay? <laughs> Uh, and then a Google translation tool, you know, everybody, you know, people are starting to, uh, you know, learn <laughs> uh, through uh, these translation tools. I don't think they're very accurate yet, but they're getting more and more accurate. Um, and then uh, we have programs that can detect emotions, whether or not you're smiling, whether or not you're depressed. Uh, they are not, uh, I have to tell you that uh, they are not very accurate yet. Uh, easier to recognize smiling, you, uh, easier to recognize uh, the fact that you get angry, but people are working on it. They want to be able to uh, have a robot to understand your emotions through speech as well as uh, through how, you, uh, how your facial expression is. Uh, so analyzing emotion by, by, by the intonation, okay? Uh, and then we have self-driving car, of course, okay? Uh, we have all these, uh, you, you, these are locusts, they say, okay? <laughs> but they are actually drones, okay? Uh, US military and China, okay? I mean, just imagine if you, how much you can do with one drone, okay? But they are talking about 1,000, eh? Uh, this is uh, what uh, Chinese military, I mean, China, what China has done, okay? This is US military, okay? They have a program that is called locusts, okay? They, the, the main, the, Interesting feature is that uh, all these drones are coordinated, okay, and they can fly very low, okay. They can escape the radar, okay. So they can be they are very good uh, military applications. Uh, AI bit doctors. Uh, this is uh, my, my friend's son, uh, just graduated from the medical come from Cambridge Medical School in the UK, and he told me that uh, his son would not get into radiology because they are replaced already, okay. So if you have if you have a son, don't ask him to get into radiology. Because they are, they are able to look at uh, photos, okay? X-ray pictures, much more accurate than human being. Now, uh, this is something that uh, you must know, okay? Uh, this is computer generated. This, this is uh, an art uh, by... Yeah, yes. Adding, they just merged two. Merge these two, uh, the photo and the art, and this is uh, computer generated. Uh, and uh, how do you do that now? Let me tell you later on. We don't know how the computer can manage that. Uh, because it's, uh, they use a, an approach that simulates the human brain, okay? Now this is the most, as I said, this is a dangerous part, okay? Uh, we do not know what the process is. And, and this is what I like, because when I teach students, right, and tell them, tell them how amazing their human brain is, and how when you connect all the neurons, right, artificial neurons, that you can do things that only human can do. And no one knows the process yet. All you need to do is just simulate uh, human thinking at the bio, I mean, human, human biological system, okay? At the biological level, okay? Now, I have more to tell you later on. Now, why do we have to care? All these technological advancements, okay? Now, uh, first of all, uh, your job may be replaced. Now, many years ago, by computer, we know that, uh, we think that computer can replace all the assembly line workers. But these days, computers are talking about replacing doctors, replacing uh, lawyers, replacing some of the professionals, okay? Uh, you can check this out. These 10 professional jobs are under threat, okay? Uh, if you have a young person coming to you to ask you what the profession he, he should get into, okay? You ask him to read this, okay? <laughs> Uh, because uh, there's a chance that uh, some of the jobs will get replaced. Uh, AI, uh, AI doomsday, AI apo apocalypse, okay? Now, uh, everybody knows Stephen Hawking. Uh, what did he say about AI? Uh, Stephen Hawking uh, warned people about the uh, worst thing. AI on AI, okay? Could be the worst thing for humanity. Uh, AI could spell the end of human race. Uh, humanity's days are numbered. Now, if you go on the web, you can actually see him uh, speak on, uh, with video clips on YouTube, okay? So this is not something that's misinterpreted. Uh, it appears uh, in many different articles, okay? Now, I look at this, uh, uh, the, what he said at the top, the development of full AI could spell the end of the human, human race, okay? I, it would take off 
on its own and redesign itself, okay? Because it's able to learn, okay? So it, it can uh, redesign itself at an ever increasing rate, and humans who are limited by slow biological evolution, okay, couldn't compete, okay? Uh, if you, even if you are to believe, uh, regardless of whether or not you believe in biological evolution, uh, he believed right, that the human race would uh, end because of the advancement in AI. Uh, now, this is uh, him. He said this, okay? Now, uh, I don't know if you know this guy. Do you know him? Now, this, this is a person uh, some of you know, okay? Now, he is uh, the founder of uh, SpaceX, Tesla. Uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the electric car, okay? He's also the founder of PayPal, one of the rich, richest uh, person in the world. And he's a tech hero. He's uh, someone that uh, people have a lot of respect for, okay? For his insights, okay? Now, according to him, AI is highly likely to destroy humans. Elon Musk, he also said that AI is vastly more risky than North Korea, okay? <laughs> and AI may spark World War III. Uh, so he, he said this, well, I'm in, increasingly inclined to think that there should be more regulatory oversight, maybe at the national or international level, just to make sure that we don't do something very foolish okay, with AI. I mean, with AI, we are summoning the, the demon, okay? Uh, and Bill Gates, I'm in a camp that is concerned about AI first. The machines uh, will do a lot of jobs for us and not be quite uh, super intelligent. So even before they become super intelligent, okay, they can do a lot of jobs for us. Okay? Uh, that can be good. Okay? Uh, that should be positive. If we, are, uh, if we manage it well, uh, a few decades after that, though, uh, the intelligence is strong enough to be a concern. I uh, agree with uh, this other guy, Elon Musk. And some others on this, and don't understand why some people are not concerned, okay? So uh, they are all, some of these people uh, are quite consistent when, when they uh, think about AI. Now, the only people who don't believe is this guy, <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. He's uh, uh, founder of Facebook. Now, he thinks that people who jump up a uh, doomsday scenario, I actually think that is pretty irresponsible. But then he, he got rebuilt. Uh, by uh, Elon Musk. He said, I've talked to Mark, this guy, about this. His understanding of the AI subject is limited. Because he, he is not concerned because he doesn't, he doesn't understand. Okay, so this is his uh, rebuttal, okay? Uh, now, let me tell you, okay, I've been working in AI for a long time myself, too. Uh, I think it's um, something of a concern. Uh, that's my opinion, okay? Uh, if you don't, then it's because you don't understand, okay? So I sort of agree with him, okay? Um, now, not only these uh, people who are so well known, okay? But also, uh, you know him, right? <laughs> Putin, okay? Putin said, said the nation that leads in AI will be the ruler of the world. Now, uh, before he said that, okay? Uh, there are many countries that have developed a strategy, including China, okay? Uh, has a, they are talking about national strategies in AI. Okay, uh, I think it's quite unusual. Okay, uh, that uh, they announced in the two sections, two sections, Liang uh, Wei. Okay, uh, I, I don't remember what they are supposed to stand. Okay, uh, but it was uh, a meeting that they had. Okay, earlier uh, last year, uh, that they announced. Okay, about uh, a national AI development plan. Okay, now not only. Uh, China, but all the others, other countries, the US, they have a national strategy in AI. All these uh, major developed countries, Europe, Japan, uh, Singapore, Canada, Australia, uh, uh, you'll be surprised that UAE also is a strategy for AI. <laughs> so not just the developed countries, but also the developing or not so developed countries, where they all have a strategy in AI. Now, I don't know whether or not, uh, they want to uh, sort of rule the world, okay? but uh, it's very important uh, that these days uh, you need to know AI, okay? Um, not so much uh, for you to rule the world, but you, you can prevent uh, a rule, okay? Uh, that rule over you, okay? Now, AI begins with machine learning, okay? Uh, now, there are uh, at least two kinds, or even three. 
uh, general and one is uh, supervised. You need to present examples. Now, uh, now for example, now there are two uh, set of trains. Okay, one's uh, trains going east, and the other is trains going west. Now that's uh, what I did uh, in 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 the eighties. Okay, we do IQ test. Uh, now, can you differentiate between trains going east and trains going west? Now, this is uh, something that you, you can all, I mean, I uh, give you enough time. Uh, you will discover that uh, they, you can actually differentiate. Uh, and uh, that's uh, the early AI. What the early AI uh, does, uh, they want to find this out. Okay? And I think uh, one thing you can, uh, uh, you may be able to. Uh, discover is that uh, they, they do not handle very large data sets. Or five here, five there, okay, and you are supposed to differentiate. Now, uh, they are sort of like a toy problem, uh, but you need someone with the intelligence to be able to differentiate between them. Uh, so they are gi you, these are given as examples, and the other ones are these ones. Uh, you are supposed to sort of uh, divide, up, divide them up into uh, groups according to how similar they are. Now again, in a way, they are IQ tests. Okay? Now, if you pay enough attention, uh, you can actually divide them up into four different groups. Uh, they all have unique features, like for example, hair stands. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you know, whenever your hair stands, you have to go into this group. And sometimes you go into this group depending on your, depending on your other features. Now, that's uh, called unsupervised learning. Okay? You don't have examples. Just, I just give you the pictures. I ask you to try to divide them up into into sub into subgroups of groups whenever uh, uh, it's possible. Okay, uh, the, according to how similar. The now, uh, so in 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 the early days, where you may not be able to find too too many real applications, mainly because uh, they cannot uh, deal with very large data sets. Now, this is uh, taken from. Uh, believe it or not, okay. Taken from, from my PhD thesis in 1989. <laughs> what I did is that uh, there's a rule that governs how these uh, cards should be laid down. Okay, so you, you need to try to guess what the hidden rule is. Okay, so you need to sort of predict what the next one is supposed to be. Uh, now that's an interesting card game, okay, but they are, it's a toy game, okay. Uh, but uh, if you can do that, you can do many other things too. Now, for example, if you can, if, if you have a way to learn what is uh, un underlying the, this pattern, you will be able to do this. Uh, I try to show you. Okay, you just need uh, to find out a way to learn, and then you can predict where the dots are. These actually are. Uh, uh, you can consider them as objects that are moving around, and they're. Their movement is sort of interrelated because one follows the other. Okay, now you are supposed to uh, find out the pattern and tell me what the next pattern is now. Again, they are, they are like IQ problems, okay? But then there are many possible real applications, okay? Now, I want you to know that uh, it is the learning methodology that matters. The same learning methodolo methodology can play this game. It can also play this game, okay? Now, what, it really depends on what you fit in. Okay, it will automatically discover patterns. Okay, now, uh, so that's uh, something again that uh, is uh, not within control in the sense that we don't know what to fit in, because I only teach the computer the, the learning methodology. Okay, now uh, how do uh, how do we do machine learning in, in the early days? So this is how people, one of the approach that people look at. Right? Like for example, this this is some uh, Sokuto. <laughs> I don't know how this is. Uh, Supposed to be pronounced, and they, they they track the eyes, and then try to find out okay, how people learn, and then they try to capture the process, and then try to uh, program the computer to f to follow the way that people learn. Okay, uh, and uh, and then you can play this. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, and then when you look at this, you, you don't see a single mathematical equation. It's about steps. It's a process, so a learning process, so it that you try to uh, program the computer to have. Okay. Now this is a one. for those of us who, for those of us who study computer, this is what we learn. So it's not quite mathematics. You, you don't fit the single equations, but you can sort these numbers. Okay, algorithms versus mathematics 
so they are not mathematics, they are about uh, how you actually uh, pose process to sort numbers, okay, and there are all these different algorithms, sometimes one is better than the others, it really depends on the input, okay, uh, one is faster, an algorithm is supposed to be better when it's, when it's uh, more accurate, okay, if we are to compare two algorithms, if it's faster, then it's, it's better, if it's more accurate, then it's better, okay, uh, uh, and there are all these tools now, okay, uh, to do all these things. So I'm going to skip this part. I want you to know that they are about algorithms. So this is taken from IBM machine learning. Algorithms, 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 okay? Uh, they are not mathematics, okay? So it's not something that is uh, purely mathematics, okay? Five. Five. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, all the things I want to say are <laughs> on the slides. Okay? Uh, now, um, now, uh, now, this is uh, things becomes uh, very difficult when we start to recognize human face because we do not know how human beings can recognize human face. Now, when you try to track uh, all these things, you, you, you discover that you, can, you, you cannot uh, capture uh, the eye movement and then come up with an algorithm because we do not know how people actually can recognize human face. So let me tell you what, what we've done 30 years ago when we try to recognize human face. Now these points cannot move regardless of what facial expressions you are having, okay? We try to measure distance between this point and this point. Uh, this point cannot move, we try to measure distance. Calculate the angles and all these things. And still it cannot be very accurate. Uh, but what happens is that uh, it becomes very accurate now. 99.9% .9 as I said. Uh, because people decide to give up. Now if we cannot simulate human uh, learning process at the cognitive level, we may be able to simulate it at the biological level. So they look at the human brain, okay? Uh, this is how the human brain is like. Uh, many years ago, uh, the Time magazine published uh, an article that tells people that uh, before the age of three, uh, the, the connections between all these neurons are really unstable. So there are, you know, you can just consider them as uh, having uh, electricity flowing between uh, neurons, okay? But then after the age of three, everything is settled, okay? Uh, so they, they believe that this is uh, something very exciting. But of course, for us Chinese, we know already that some uh, think about some, okay? I don't know why, okay? <laughs> but then uh, there is actually a biological basis behind this, okay? <laughs> and this is how the neuron is like. Uh, what is interesting is that uh, unlike electricity wire, they don't touch each other. All the neurons uh, are connected, but there's a small gap between the connection. Uh, and this is quite amazing. Right? I mean, I tell uh, my students, okay, now this, this is what happened at the gap between two, two neurons. So have chemicals get emitted. And then if the chemicals are not emitted in sufficient amount, uh, it will not be able to stimulate all these uh, neurotransmitters, the receptors, okay? Uh, if the stimulation is too small, then the, the transmission of these uh, electric potentials will have to stop, okay? Uh, I think this is uh, very interesting in the sense that uh, you can actually build a mathematical model. And then because of this mathematical model, everything can get connected, okay? And this can uh, actually allow you to recognize faces. We don't know why, uh, because uh, we, I've just told you that we have no way of understanding why human can recognize faces. We, we have no way to, of understanding why we can recognize speech. Uh, but uh, with this, we actually, uh, let me just skip some of these things, okay? Uh, I think this is what I want to show you now. Years ago, this is what we can do because computers are slow. But uh, recently, they have discovered that uh, when you connect more of these things together, you are able to do more accurately, okay? Uh, you can recognize many more things. Now, no one knows why. Okay? I, I tell much, many of these uh, techniques in computer vision, image analysis becomes obsolete because we start talking about deep learning. Well, I'm not sure how much you heard about the deep learning, okay? But uh, for some very strange reason, uh, you can actually achieve very good accuracy, okay? Now, let me uh, just show you before I finish, okay? I think I need to show you this. Uh, the accuracy, okay? Now, perhaps not. Now, let, let me just... Uh, because I don't have time. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Now, uh, I've just told you that uh, by simulating uh, at just a little bit of what the human, thing, human brain functions, we can do many things that only a human can do. Uh, and uh, this, uh, the, the, the words that I, um, that I was reminded of, okay? I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows well. Now, uh, this, I don't think, I, I'm not sure if this is a, a, a question, okay? He is the, the first person to receive what we call the Turing Award, which is uh, the Nobel Prize in Computer Science. Uh, he said, a year spent in AI is enough to make one believe in God. Uh, so, uh, this is what I've been doing, okay? Uh, finding patterns in uh, DNA. This is one single gene, okay? And I've published many papers, okay? Uh, just to be more convincing, when I tell people that uh, DNA is the language of God, I, I don't know if you know, if you are aware of this book uh, by Francis Collins, okay? Uh, director of the I. Uh, department, uh, the Institute of Health, okay? Uh, he thinks that, uh, you know, there is, uh, uh, the God speaks through this language, okay? Uh, and then you can think, by, I mean, someone has uh, looked at DNA, okay, from the perspective of linguistics. Uh, there are words, sentences, grammar, ph phonetics, and semantics in, these, uh, in this language. Uh, now, this is uh, one of the that they have been working in. Uh, I think I don't know how much you know about RNA uh, being uh, responsible for transcription, okay? Uh, for, for a long time, people, discover, people think that the RNA is unimportant. They only transcribe, okay? But then, uh, starting several years ago, people discovered that uh, RNA actually carries a lot of uh, um, information, okay? I've been uh, looking into this uh, and doing some research in that, okay? Uh, now, I don't have time for this, but uh, this is Bill Gates. Uh, according to him, DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software that we have uh, ever created, okay? So uh, God put a computer, hardware and software together, okay? Uh, which I find very amazing right? when I, the more I, I research into that. And then this is uh, Anthony Flu. I don't know how many of you know him. He's, uh, according to the book, one of the world's most notorious uh, atheists because he's written a book on atheism, okay? But uh, before he, he's passing away, okay? He said he now believes in God, okay? Mainly because of DNA, okay? Uh, it's impossible okay, that humans uh, just appear by chance uh, because there are a lot of information. Uh, that's why I've been publishing a lot, okay, as I said. Mainly uh, when I try to convince people, okay? I, I don't have to tell people that I've read about some other people doing their research. I can just tell people that I've been doing research in this area. Uh, my research papers are published in one of these uh, top uh, journals. Uh, and I think I can speak to convincing, convincing myself <laughs> that uh, this is indeed uh, a language of God. Now, uh, I have to uh, pause here, okay? Uh, there are many things that I've not quite... Uh, oh. By the way, this is interesting, okay? Uh, how many, which, which of these are cookies, which of these are, are dogs, okay? For a long time, computer only have 70% accuracy. <laughs> they cannot really differentiate between dogs and cookies. So it's only until the uh, deep learning with that uh, they've uh, managed to achieve, okay? Uh, very accurate results. So now human beings like that, right? since uh, 2015, the error rate, so, so computer make fewer error than human being, okay? So now, uh, you can just entrust the computer to do everything for you, okay? Because they will be able to do better, okay? Now, uh, I have 140 pages, including some discussion questions, okay? Feel from the uh, social impact point of view, uh, this is not the most updated. I've added uh, about 20 so slides. I'll be sending an update. And there are questions about uh, possible impacts on AI. Uh, social impacts, uh, philosophical, philo theological, okay? Uh, uh, and uh, I think I will have to leave it to you to find out more because uh, uh, my time's uh, up, I think, okay? Yeah. Right. Thank you.